ಘನಪದಿಗಂ ಹವಾಮಹೆ ಕವಿನ್ ಕವೇನಾಪಮಶ್ರವಸ್ತಮ ಜ್ಯೇಷ್ಠರಾಜ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಣ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮನಸ್ಪತನ ಶೃಣ್ವನ್ನೋದಿ ಸೇದ ಸಾಧನ ಪ್ರಣೋ ದೇ ಸರಸ್ವೇವಾಜೇಬಿರ್ವಾಜೇನೇವೇ ಗಣೇಶಾ ನಮಃ ಸರಸ್ವತೇ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಹರಿ ಇ ಓಂ ಓಂ ಸಾಯೀಶ್ವರಾಯ ವಿಮಹೆ ಸತ್ಯದೇವಾಯ ಧೀಮಹ ತನ್ನ ಸರ್ವ ಪ್ರಚೋದಯಾದ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತೆ 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 ಹೇ ಸಾಯಿರಾಮ ಲೀನ್ ಸಾಯಿರಾಮ ಶರ್ಮ and sairam to all of our listeners welcome sharma and i thank bhagwan for another chance to speak of his glory and how he has come to save us the title of our talk tonight is go the magical word go is what we all long to hear from from swami in the darshan line because when he said go it meant go into the interview room and we would mother betty our group leader insisted that we all give him the biggest smile as he walked past she said everyone else is sitting there with castor oil faces swami has said he doesn't like castor oil faces he wants to see a smile so we would all be beaming at him when he went past and you know it worked because then he would say something like new zealand new zealand i see you i see you and that was that was a hint that we were going to get two interviews because he said it twice now it was the magical word for us we all long to hear it and i think every single person in that mandir would long to hear go and of course shirdi baba used to say go and he would throw a rock or a brick at someone sometimes because of course he was embodiment of shiva energy but he wasn't trying to hurt the person he was saying go to all of that person's negative qualities the darknesses in their heart whereas our swami our bhagwan shri satyasai go could also mean that but it it was double meaning um also go into the interview room So I'm going to describe this experience and I'm not doing it just so that you get a visual picture of the interview room and what goes on in there and how it looks but how you can use this opportunity to take that visual and turn it into your inner view. I often get asked the question how should I pray to Swami and I am going to give you a tip Uh, of what really works very well and perhaps you would like to use it when i explain it after i describe the process of going into the interview room go said swami he came gliding towards me on september the 16th 1995 it was more early morning darshan he was gliding you know swami never looked like he was walking i used to wonder if he was actually on roller skates because he just smoothly glided i never seemed to see him stepping if you know what i mean and as he came towards me i tell you he looked like the sun dancing the sun was behind his head lighting up his hair like a halo and he looked like a candle on fire he came towards me and said that magical word how many i said 21 swami he said go and immediately we all got up and mata told us get up there as fast as you can don't waste time so we all headed up the aisle we were accompanied by one of the ladies uh one of swami's um seva dolls as we went up and sat on the veranda 
we had to wait until Swami gave his full darshan round and then we would see him coming. We were not to talk while we were sitting on the veranda. We should just be praying, Mata said, that he will see us. Because sometimes he could come to the see everyone of sitting there and decide to cancel the interview. And we didn't want that. We had gotten so far to get onto the veranda. Now, the veranda had a little, as you know, Swami had an interview room, which was to the side of the bhajan hall in the mandir. Wooden door, little threshold. And as he came round, he would un unlatch the door, and then he would wait beside the door while we all went in. He didn't go in first, he waited. And as we all went past, he would sometimes make a comment. And one of my friends was going in, and he, she was wearing a ring he had made in a um, previous interview. And he pointed out the ring to her, and he said, I made that. <laughs> and she said, yes, Lord. Uh, what do you say to God? You know, I made that. It was so, so adorable. So we all sit, and then he comes in behind us, and then he might also say a few other words. Now, when he will sit on his chair... Um, in Prashanti, it was a swivel chair with a dark red velvet with an om inlaid in brass at the top and other Sanskrit words. It, it truly looked like the throne, a throne that God would use for his everyday business. It had little peacock heads on the armrests and, of course, a handkerchief, and his foot cushion was there. The floor was marble. It was hard. And uh, you had to sit as best you could because we weren't allowed to take our cushions into the interview room. And then um, the, there was an amazing thing about that room. It was a simple little room. Um, there were three clocks on the wall, and each one of them had a picture of Swami on the clock face. These, I think, are clocks you can get outside or in maybe in the ashram shop. And I used, this used to amuse me that there were three clocks on the wall. But when Swami would materialize a watch, he would look at the watch. Of course, it was keeping perfect time. He would show it to all of us and then point to the clocks. And he said, see, perfect time. Now, the room, as I said, was very simple. It wasn't ornate, not at all. The walls were just like the outside of the mandir, that kind of pink and blue color. And there was a fan, which he would switch on as soon as we came into the room, and he would switch it off as we were going out, always saving electricity, always teaching us lessons. And there would be a little table beside his chair, and on it was usually a plastic shopping bag, pink or red, and it was full of booty packets. Little birds would fly in and out of the interview room chirping, um, and, of course, you could hear through the window, which was open bars with um, wooden shutters with elephants carved on. You could hear sometimes the priest chanting Vedam. And, of course, there was this thin curtain uh, leading to the inner room where that was for private interviews where Swami would be discussing very private business, like he would send the doctors in there, or if it was someone who's having a great difficulty, he didn't want the rest of the group to hear it, you would go in there. So there are two rooms, and in the room, in the, in the private room, there is also a cupboard in which he kept what I call his goodies, which he would uh, sometimes go into, and he would distribute maybe a robe or a dhoti or something like that to some fortunate devotee. And there was always a lovely breeze in there, and you weren't ever aware that it was hot. This is one thing I noticed. Once I was in his divine presence, even though it was very hot outside, I suddenly lost all consciousness of temperature. I was very, very comfortable. And the amazing thing about that room is that Swami could change the size of it. Now, we were 21 in most of our interviews, and we were packed in like sardines. But several times when I was in Darshan, I saw 70 or more people go in there. And when they came out, I said, how did you all fit? And they said, we were very comfortable. There's plenty of room. And they were all in the outer room. So Swami could change the size of that room. And I can tell you from personal experience, he changed his size while he was in there. When he was speaking to me the first time and he was saying, how are you, madam? Uh, what are you doing? 
Um, your mind, you know, um, you're a good girl. Your mind is sometimes in the marketplace. He, he, he shrank. He got very tiny in his chair. And I looked at him. I thought, he looks like a child sitting in that big chair. And I couldn't get my head around this. Swami, how did you do that? And then later he stood up and he was his normal size again. So I saw that with my own eyes. He could change his size. Why he did it, I do not know. But that was an extraordinary event for me. And in that room, you feel so at home. It is, I would call it a homely room. Uh, very simple. Not, no embellishments, no pictures on the walls. Um, it was, of course, spotlessly clean. And it was just you and Swami. And even, I wasn't even to my, myself aware so much of the people in the group. The power and the love pouring off of that form was phenomenal. You felt your whole body being drenched with his light and his love. And you felt like you were the only person in the room with him. Even though he was talking to someone else, you could still feel this power pouring through you, and your heart was just singing, is the only way I can describe it. Now, we were, um, uh, when I, in a former um, talk, I talked about recommending a chair for Swami in your home. Because if you set up a chair, then you can imagine that you are in the interview room with him. And the reason I have given such a, a succinct description of the interview room is I'm suggesting for people who say, how can I pray to Swami, that you imagine uh, that you are walking into the interview room with him. I've given you a good description. I think you could probably imagine it. And don't say that you can't because everyone has an imagination. If I could, I would draw it for you. But imagine you are walking in there. And if you have got other people with you in your imagination, like family members or friends or people you want to pray for or help, imagine them walking with you into the interview room. And if you want to speak to Swami privately, Envision yourself walking through the curtain, which separates the outer room into the inner room, which is much the same as the outer room, very simple. The only difference is in the inner room, there are some chairs for the, for the devotees, and Swami has another chair in there, very similar to the one that is in the outer room. And if you're lucky, you get to peek at his little cupboard there. But I didn't. I wanted to because I knew he had goodies in there. In fact, one day he had a thermos bottle in there. And I thought, is Swami having cups of tea? <laughs> but but th it's true that I would notice in morning darshan, um, some ladies, elders, ladies would always come and hang a thermos on the back door to the mandir on the side there. And so I think it was Swami's morning drink, whatever that might have been. However, when you are in that private room, if you can envision this with me, there you are pouring your heart out to Swami. You can talk to him heart to heart. You know, he knows everything. You don't have to ask him for anything. But it helps, I think, very much to do this and envision yourself with him. And the more you do this, the more you will be more closely heart to heart with him because he is only heart to heart. I always remember him saying, uh, when he says go, he also is saying go to get rid of your bad qualities because he only wants a happy life for you. I remember he once said, some hearts are filled with darkness. I do not go near them. Some hearts are blazing like a million suns. There is no reason for me to go near them. I look for a small, steady flame in the spiritual heart. It is my duty to make that flame burn brighter. And you can envision that. You can envision yourself with that little flame going up, sitting at his feet and saying, Swami, make that flame brighter, make it bigger, make it shine through my eyes, make it shine in my face. He often said to increase and expand that flame, do service. 
service makes that flame go brighter, selfless service. And again, this is keeping your focus inward. The journey to Sai is an inward journey. You can make as many trips to Prashanti or Whitefield as you like in the outer world, but to go into the inner world where he always is there lodged in your heart is a much quicker trip and it doesn't cost anything. No airfares, no waiting in departure lounges, no not liking the food you're getting on the plane. And even if you're going to, um, say, Prashanti or Whitefield, of course, there is in Prashanti the Samadhi that is a superconductor. And of course, his power still emanates from that um, Samadhi. I'm not suggesting we don't go still to Prashanti, um, but he wants Prashanti in our heart. He said, once it is in your heart and glowing like a bright flame, there is no need to come to Prashanti or any temple for that matter, because you are the temple. You are the walking interview room. You are the one who is spreading his love. You are the one who is speaking of his teachings. I say, open that door and go, go, go. I hope you have enjoyed this little talk about the inner room and the interview room, and I wish you all success on your spiritual journey. Om Shri Sai Ram. Om Shri Sai Ram. Tasmat Karunya Bhavena Raksha Raksha Sai Ishwara Hari Om Tat Sat Shri Sai Ishwara Rupa Namastu Om Shanti Shanti Shanti